محرم خمیسانی جمال ابو صاحب غلام ربانی مظہر یوسف امر جلیل مائی برادرز اینڈ سسٹرس مجھے لائے کچھ اتریوں گالیوں کئی ہوئی میں جو انہیں کے لفظ میڈم خمیسانی جو کچھ سجیسٹ کہے ہو او آئی ایم اوور آرڈ بائی بائی وٹ سینٹیمنٹس ہیو بین ایکسپریسڈ ہیئر آئی ہیو ریٹن اے فیو رینڈم تھاٹس آن سندھی کلچر سندھی لینگویج اینڈ لٹریچر وچ آئی وڈ لائک ٹو شیئر وتھ یو کلچر از اے ٹرم ایزی ٹو ویژولائز بٹ ڈیفیکلٹ ٹو ڈیفائن ایڈیڈ ٹو دس ڈیفیکلٹی از دا کنفاؤنڈنگ سیمینٹکس آف اور پیکیولیئر پاکستانی ملیو آرڈنریلی دیر شوڈ بی نو ڈفرنس سیمینٹیکلی اسپیکنگ بٹوین سندھی کلچر اینڈ کلچر آف سندھ اور پاکستانی کلچر اینڈ کلچر آف پاکستان بٹ دس از ناٹ ایگزیکٹلی ایکیوریٹ Sindhi culture and culture of Sindh were identical terms before Pakistan came into being on August the 14th, 1947. That identity, however, has been impregnated with doubts, confusions, intrusions, and are above all compulsive indoctrinations. People like me believe that the immigrant admixture of culture, cultural traits, from across the borders, the ethos of Urdu language and its speakers have indeed enriched the Sindhi culture or the culture of Sindh. But for the visible fissiprous tendencies which have also seeped into the minds of the intellectuals who should otherwise not be susceptible to such invasions and incursions into their thought processes, I would have liked to imagine that Sindhi culture or the culture of Sindh is indivisible, incarnate and representative of its people as a whole, some colourful and hilarious variations notwithstanding. Culture has been defined in various ways depending on contexts and periods of reference. But if one wishes to avoid controversies of time and space, one would like to define a culture as the minimal expression or the common denominator of beliefs, reflexes, behaviors, attitudes, reactions, reflections, and practices of a pe people in a secular milieu. This may be an overextended pres prescription, but it is not so. The societal setup as also the mindset of the Sindhi people, both urban as well as rural, is intrinsically tribal and feudal, which is now being transformed into semi-individualistic by the modern intrusions of technology, commercialism and global communications. How does one determine the core culture of a people? That is a question of methodology. An anthropological study or an historical analysis of a culture may throw light on the progress or otherwise of a culture. But I am a great believer in explaining culture by reference to language, literature, folklore, folk music, arts and crafts, crafts of a people. And I believe that many of the beliefs and human reactions can be explained by the significant trends in these spheres of intellectual activity. I am also a great believer in identifying the changes through cerebral, neurological and genetic paradigms. For example, to me, the abstract art signifies the confusions, contradictions and confrontations of the modern times in the human mind in Western and by extension to Eastern societies, which have crystal crystallized and sedimented in the genetic cartography of man in these societies. The art of Picasso is relatable to the Spanish Civil War and its aftermath. Similarly, the two world wars, as also the Cold War, have impregnated the minds of Western world with new reactions and new responses. These are, of course, 
subject to corresponding variations of different peoples in different countries who were affected by these historical events in multifarious ways. These responses are reflected in the arts and literature of these nations and have, not, have now resulted in almost permanent alterations in the psyche, the neurological or genetic stratosphere of such people. It is now accepted that the flower children, the pop music, the pervasive bohemian aberrations in dress and personal hygiene and makeup, free love, use of drugs, were the result of positive as well as negative reactions produced by the Korean and Vietnam wars and also by the Cold War on an almost permanent basis. Take the example of the Jews before and after the Holocaust as also their migration into and the establishment of Israel. Jews were liberal and cultural people, although their culture was resented by other communities on the basis of religious beliefs. Historically, they were also the most hounded and brutalized people, but now even the most liberal among them, as it so tellingly appears from the secular literature published in Israel, is prone to demand atonement, if not physical revenge. Since it's not possible to avenge the expropriations and atrocities by the Nazis from Germany or the German people, it is, according to them, legitimate to expropriate the lands and settlements of Arabs and commit expropriations and atrocities against the Palestinian people. These changes are no more merely transitional, transitory and temporal, but have become neurological and genetic. In many of the short stories that I have read, Jews in Jerusalem dream of Auschwitz, the concentration camp, and on waking up, pick up guns to attack a settlement of Arabs or even stab, stab a neighbor uh, for a very frivolous dispute. Their collective uh, schizophrenia is now a matter of physical phenomenon. It is so reflected by their literature, their art, their music, and through the media. Look at the geography and history of Sindh. Settlement of the people on the banks of Indus and their periphery since at least 5,000 years has determined the idea of a permanent homeland which, which provided uninterrupted sustenance. Even when the Indus changed its course and destroyed these settlements, the villages and towns were rebuilt on the same sites. The excavations of Mohanjodaro, Amri, Kordiji and other sites have proved this attitude beyond a shadow of doubt. The idea has crystallized into almost a fanatic possessiveness as of a beloved. Shah Abdul Latif expressed the feeling thus, Sajan Asane Ke Anasya Visre. English translation, I'm sorry, I've translated the uh, poetry in a free manner just to convey the sense and not very literal. The beloved and the homeland are forgotten by only the shameless. Similarly, in another bath, Sandi Jasane Khe Khaturi Baya. For me, the dust of my homeland is like the ambergris. Or, Muay Jias Je Vanye Marmali Rame. My death would be transformed into life if my dead body is taken to my homeland. The adage that a Sindhi feels homesick after a very short time if he travels to any other place for work or even for recreation is reflective of the same thought process. It may even be called an anti-migratory instinct. Even in the case of the Sindh Varkis, the Hindu Amils and Bhaibans of pre-partition days, after making fortunes in far off lands, they would return home and spend their fortunes on making their cities and towns like Shikarpur or Hyderabad more beautiful, more wholesome. Shah Latif Sursamundi magnificently describes the pangs of separation of a beloved or a husband who is about to leave the sh shores of Sindh. The nostalgia is almost a physical pain. Vanyai Visri Shal Tojo Sodo Sikhyo Anya Ay Kal Purto Safar Sambhai May you forget the tricks of the trade which take you away to far off places. 
you have hardly arrived and yet you wish to travel again. Please, oh please, don't go away again. Vanjare ji maa, vanjaro nab paliye, ayo bare maa, punto safar sambhe. Oh mother, please stop him from going away again to travel. He has just returned after such a long year and yet he wants to start again. Please make him stay. This concept of a permanent and life-sustaining homeland inculcated the trad traditions of patriotism and cognition of the inalienable right to defend the homeland from invaders and aggressors. The cl classical, folk, classical and folk poetry of resistance relating to Dodo, Dula Darya Khan, the epics of Khardi and Miani, and the more modern resistance literature of the anti one unit and MRD movements have given eloquent expression to these aspects of Sindhi culture. One finds a special sur of Kedaru in almost every significant classical poet, including Shah Abdul Latif. A poet without a Kedaru, epic poetry of patriotism and honor, was not considered to be worth, a worthwhile poet. This tradition of Kedaro has been carried over to modern times. Almost all the major poets, like Sheikh Ayaz, Tanvir, Niaz Hamayuni, Shamshir ul Hadri, Imdad Husseini, Ustad Bukhari, Kamar Shahbaz, Tajal Bevas, Malik Nadim, Khaki Joyo, Raz Nathan Shai, Hassan Dars, Anwar Pizado, and numerous other poets have contributed splendid resistance poetry to prove that whenever the homeland was beset with aggression or confrontation, the people rose against the aggressor or the usurper with whatever they had at their disposal, emotionally, physically, or materially. Similar is the case with prose writing, especially fiction. The short stories of Jamal Abro, Amar Jalil, Ghulam Nabi Mughal, Badr Abro, Shakur Nizamani, Faqeel Lashari, Rahmatullah Manyuti, Jan Khaskheli, Kaleem Lashari, to name only a few, have contributed superb expression to the literature of resistance in the last three millennia. The other side of this coin is that, in spite of this possessive enigma of its people, Sindh has been a crucible of various sub-civilizations sub right from the days of Mohanjo-Daro to the present times. Finding Sindh as a lucrative piece of property and riches, a green and verdant valley inhabited by peaceable people, it has invited numerous invasions as well as peaceful migrations of different people from Aryans, Greeks, Arabs, Persians, Central Asian tribes, and people from neighboring as well as far off places of the subcontinent. When the dust settled, the admixture of these people has enriched the language, the cultural scene, as well as the thought processes born out of resistance, acceptance, and partial adoption of alien mores and manners. A scientific study of the Sindhi language can easily trace these influences. The influences of Arabic, Persian, and now Urdu is quite apparent, but even the Dravidian and Sanskritic influences can be traced in the etymology, the grammar, the proverbs, the metaphors, and idioms of the language. Unfortunately, such a scientific analysis has yet to take the form of published studies and treatises. This has resulted in speculative theories about the origin of Sindhi language. The Indus script has not yet been deciphered. Some scholars like Father Heras and Asko Parpola have speculated about its proto-Dravidian origin. Others like Dr. Hunter and Swami Sankaranand drive it from proto-Indo-Aryan. Yet others like Dr. N. A. Baloch have speculated about a Semitic origin. Recently, in November last, there was an illuminating lecture of Professor Asko Parpola, the Finnish scholar, who has devoted almost his entire academic life to the study of the Indus script. He and some Russian researchers have supported the proposition advanced by Father Harris in early 40s that the Indus script contains proto-Dravidian language. Um, my friend, Mother Yusuf mentioned about my friendship with Asko Papula. In fact, when he came for the first time in Pakistan, he was kind to stay with me in my house, uh, his wife and two daughters. This time only his wife came and uh, 
he could not of course uh, live with us because he was on government expense he and some russian researchers have supported the proposition advanced by father harris in early 40s that the indus script contains proto dravidian language dr parpola has published the monumental work of indus concordance in three volumes and has written numerous treatises and articles on the language cosmology and religion of the indus people the pictographs on the indus seals is an enigma for them but they have eluded him like the proverbial mirage in the 70s he had speculated on the sign of fish and read it as mean which on the rebus principle he identified mean with a uh, another mean with a celestial god of dravidian mythology in his recent lecture at the national museum he concentrated on a sign of two overlapping circles as a tamil word chur meaning bangles which also has a meaning of the goddess of fertility after the lecture i jokingly told him that had he asked a rustic sindhi showing him the dancing girl of mondu daro as to what was he wearing in her arms he would have immediately told him that it was a chud or bahi similarly years ago when he had uh, propounded his theory about the fish sign and the word mean i had quoted a bait from shah abdul latif and told him the significance of the word may for fish and fish girl of the mohanas in sur kamod with the parable of nuri jam tamaji tu samu aun gandri mu me aban vi hai pasi me ki di hai mata mangar mati hai you are the sama king i a fisher woman with many weaknesses please don't abandon mangar because of this daughter of the fisherman तू तमाची तड़धणी आ मोहानी मे मू डोहाग मडे आऊ जा नाले सुएस तुंजे यू आर तमाची द लॉर्ड ऑफ द रिवर आई एम जस्ट अ फिश मोंग प्लीज डोंट अबंडन मी बिकॉज आई बिलोंग टू यू आई हैड सजेस्टेड टू हिम टू कंसंट्रेट ऑन इंडिजिनस सिंधी व्हिच वुड गिव हिम मोर इंडिकेटर्स एज टू द ओरिजिन एंड डिसाइफरमेंट ऑफ द इंडस स्क्रिप्ट रादर देन सर्चिंग एट रैंडम फॉर वर्ड्स इन द डिक्शनरी ऑफ ड्रेविडियन लैंग्वेजेस बाय बरो एंड एमएनओ i wish there were a young student of a comparative linguistics who would compile an etymological dictionary of sindhi language and i would assure you that the decipherment of indus script would not be that far off sindh the crucible crucible of cultures has given birth to sindhi mysticism which is quite distinct from either the vedanta or from the sufism of rumi or bayazid Sindhi mysticism is a kaleidoscope of humanism compassion and universal brotherhood of mankind it has grown out of the thought processes now genetically etched in the psyche of sindhi people a sindhi would not harm unnecessarily even an insect those of you who have visited the rustic hamlets in the rural areas must have noticed the strange behavior of love and care for the cattle a cow a sheep a goat or a buffalo is pampered with endearing words otherwise reserved for children or blood relations like mother and father panchona hai un ke bakri ke amma these are the words that are used this may be pastoral vestige but it's a revelation of the compassion and an expression of the mystic idea that the ultimate reality is composed of all the manifestations of the creation of life of the cosmos and of the total natural phenomena which touch the inner sensibilities of the homo sapiens mu tu aun assi chare chitta laah sandhi do sagba to odai na ache erase from your heart the four me you i and we the fire of hell shall not touch you if you do so similar is the case with the absence of religious or sectarian obscurantism until perhaps in the 20th century the principle of universal brotherhood and the oneness of human kind is the preponderant theme of the mystic poetry of sindhi language from shah sachal and sami to even the modest sughars of the folklore in a parna iman ji kalme go kothai daga tujhe dil mein shirk hai shaitan moh mein musliman andar azar ahi me are reciting the kalma is not faith in your heart is the duality and the devil you indeed are a muslim in appearances only
but in fact you are other the idolater. The Sindhi mysticism has also contributed to the universality of the idea of beauty of the ultimate reality. This universality is expressed by the poets and the musicians. Ek kasar dar lakh kode kanis garkhyu jena karya parakh tena sajan saam. It's like a palace with millions of doors and trillions of windows. From wherever, wherever I look, the beloved is in front of me. It is also reflected in the arts and crafts of sin. A historical continuity of such expression is too glaring to go unnoticed. The institution of dance, as is evident from the dancing girl of Mohanjo has continued till this day in the folk dances like Hamarcho, the Hojamalo, and many other dances. The lyre and chung depicted on some Indus seals indicate the tradition of rich variety of music, both instrumental and vocal, in the present day Sindhi culture. The tre trefoil ajrak on the shoulders of the king priest of Mohandudaro is still one of the outstanding cultural phenomena of, of present day mode of textile apparel in Sindhi culture. It is now accepted that the civilization of Mohandudaro was matriarchal. In spite of later patriarchal intrusions, the Sindhi culture till today gives ascendancy to a mother, a sister, and a daughter. A mother in the Sindhian society till recently still decided the important family affairs in preference to the decision by male members. A daughter is considered as equivalent to the moral force of seven Qurans. Nyani Satta Quranai. This. The sublimity of love between a woman and a man, as between the lover and the beloved, is so vivid in all the poets of Sindhi language that it touches the hearts of men and women alike, the horrible tribal aberration of Karokari notwithstanding. I'll just cite one bath of Shah Abdul Latif to demonstrate this aspect. I think I'll uh, move over, I'll not read these uh, baths because it's going to uh, make it a very long thing. So let us come back to Sindhi culture. Let me state here that no other literary work demonstrates the soul of a culture more vividly than the Risalo of Shah Abdul Latif vis-a-vis -vis Sindhi culture. It almost embodies the soul of Sindhi culture. I have quoted the poetry of Shah Latif alone as illustrations. He is the most outstanding example of expressing the culture of Sindh and its people. Numerous other examples can also be quoted ad infinitum from other poets and writers to demonstrate the different aspects of Sindhi culture. But the constraints of time do not allow such an exercise. I would not like to take more time for this. This is only an overview. But I would like to add that the vitality of Sindhi culture and therefore its language and literature is now being eroded by the so-called modernity and commercialism being thrust upon the entire Eastern world. How do we withstand this onslaught is anybody's guess. Thank you very much.